What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Finance with Parks. In today's video, we're going to talk about kind of a sad subject to be honest, and that is how has college become so dang unaffordable? We're going to talk about where student loans stand, why the amount is just mind-blowing, why college has become so expensive, who is benefiting from it. We're going to break it all down. Let's do it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing. We talk all things personal finance. We are trying to make it to a thousand subscribers. So if you enjoy this video, please subscribe down below. It really helps out the channel. All right, we're going to go ahead and share my screen here. We got our nice intro. How has college become unaffordable? How far we have fallen? All right, so let's talk about some top level stats first. Hate to read all the slides. No one likes that, but I'm going to with a couple of these bullet points here because these numbers are very scary, to be honest. 43.2 million students are in debt by an average of 39K. Ouch, ouchie. $39,000 when you're graduating college is so much money to be taking on. And that's an average. I, I just, I don't understand how people are surviving like that when they graduate and have that kind of, you know, not, what is that umbrella hanging over their head or just that stress? I mean, that is a crazy number right out of school. You gotta be making a lot to pay that off and it's gonna be accruing interest. The federal government alone is, cut, is carrying 1.59 trillion of unpaid student loans. Oh my God. Can you imagine is any company carrying that on their balance sheet like a bank? 1.6 trillion of outstanding loans that people owe the government for college, for being able to afford college. I mean, that's why there's all that talk about for giving student loans, right? And I'm not gonna get into that um, topic because that's not for this video. But when you talk about forgiving student loans, this is the value they're talking about. 1.6 trillion. Now they're not sort of talking about forgiving all of it, but that just gives you the scale of where we stand and how much the federal government has in outstanding loans. 15% of all American adults report they have outstanding undergraduate student debt. I think the thing that stands out to me, like looking through these numbers, right, is it just, there's a lot of money hanging over people's heads. That's the word I was looking for earlier. And to have that, it's going to impact the economy at some point, right? And, and why I say that is if you're trying to afford a house and you have 40 grand of student loans right off the bat, you're going to have to focus on paying those down. What does that do? It kicks off your mortgage. You're going to have to wait longer to buy a house, which means you're going to be running for longer. It means you're going to have to pay a lot less for a car. It just really limits the amount of money you can spend or contribute to the economy right away because you're just you're getting drowned out by student loans the whole time. Now here's something on the right here <laughs> that hurts the soul a little bit. Average tuition cost per year. So keep in mind, all this data was from a US news article that was published in 2020, I believe. So this was just an average at the time. Private colleges, $38,000 a year to attend. So you're paying $19,000 a semester on average. Put that into perspective, that's a nice car every six months to go to a private school. And there are a lot that are way more than that. Let me tell you, I visited Duke when I was uh, Duke and Stanford. Didn't get in there. When I was graduating high school, man, those totals were way above that 38K. And that was eight years ago now, give or take. So and just ridiculously expensive. Public out of state, 23 grand. Public in state, 10K. Now that's one thing I'll mention with college getting to the point where it is unaffordable, going to an in-state college has honestly become one of the only moves. And also junior college has become so much more attractive because of the prices. I went to an out-of-state school. I went to Arizona and I don't regret that one bit. I ended up getting really lucky and being on scholarship. But if I didn't have that, it really wouldn't have made financial sense to go out of state to pay, look at that. I mean, if you look at the comparison, you're paying more than double on average if you go out of state versus staying in in-state. Hopefully you have good in-state institutions, obviously, that you can attend. But, you know, we're getting to that point where that's one of your only choices, to be honest, where it still makes sense. 
All right, so that's enough of the data here, but I just wanted to highlight some of, them, some of those because they really stood out to me. Now, how has this happened? This is obviously opinion, so do be debated. And I only put three bullets here. First one, society has normalized paying whatever number it takes to get an education. I think a lot of you, I'm 28 now, so growing up in my generation, right, it was always you're gonna go to school and you're gonna go to college. I mean, I heard that since I was in elementary school. A lot of my friends heard that. And that, that was just drilled into us by uh, my parents or that generation. And honestly, it just became so numbing that the numbers didn't start to matter anymore, right? One of the things with the debt um, as well, this quote here on bullet two is we will worry about that later. And now people say that with a lot of debt, right? Not just student loans. But it's one of those things where people have adopted that attitude. Well, we'll, we'll worry about that after you graduate. And yeah, I mean, you can say that, but I think people underestimate how much of an impact it really has on the back end. I definitely did, for sure. The last one is the federal government backs student loans and not just the private bank sector. Now, that's been happening for a while. I think the article I was reading said in the 1960s, the federal government started backing student loans. But it seems like to me that that number has just substantially increased over the last couple of years where now the federal government is helping out with a ton of loans. And we'll talk about why that's frustrating in the next half as far as making interest goes. But there's just a lot of people now willing to front money to pay for college. And I think in turn, that's really just raised the prices of universities in general. But to be honest, the number one reason is back to that you know society, right? These universities are getting away with charging whatever because people still continue to pay and attend. Now that's changed a little bit with COVID, so it'll be interesting to see how that has an impact in the long term, but definitely the prior 10 years before COVID, right? It was, we're going to college, we're not worrying about the dollar amount, and we'll figure it out later. And colleges have taken advantage of that, candidly speaking. Okay, so we'll flip over to the next slide here. And so who is benefiting? <laughs> who are the ones raking it in? when college is costing you 40 grand a year for private institutions. Well, the first one are the banks and the federal government, the ones who are giving out the loans and then getting interest for borrowing that money, right? The student loan interest rate, I think mine, don't quote me on this, but it was like 6%, pretty substantial. That's above my house interest rate and that's above my car interest rate. So for a simple example there, if you had $10,000 in student loan debt and you didn't pay you didn't make any payments in your first year, that $10,000 accrued 6% interest or $60 at the end of the year. Hope that math is right. But uh, you multiply that by 0 0.06. So at the end of the day, I mean, they're just making free money because people aren't paying off the loans. It's crazy. All right. Um, I think that math is 600. I'm sorry. Yeah, $600 on 10 grand. It, it, it adds up quickly when you have an interest rate. And that was a 10 grand example. Think about 40 grand. All right, the next one, university presidents, professors, department heads. A lot of this is public information. And if you want to be kind of upset, <laughs> go ahead and look up your institutions and what they're paying their presidents. This is if it's a public institution. It's, um, it has to be published. Private is a little harder to find. But public info like U of A and ASU, which I have as examples here, both of their total compensations, their base salaries were about 750,000, but with bonuses are making up to a million dollars a year. And I wanna put that into perspective because when I started school, when I started college, should have been just under 10 years ago now, for reference, the Arizona president was making 300,000. That has ballooned to a million. That it, that's a very substantial amount of raises in a 10 year period because, you know, and, and the, the tuition has increased at that same rate. And now all that extra money is going to the people on, you know, professors, department heads, and these presidents. Look at the private school numbers down here. This was from Business Insider. This was just disgusting. <laughs> and these numbers were from 2017 because that was the only thing I could find. TCU president. Fellow Texan, $2.6 million in 2017. USC, the Southern Cal version, $2.4 million in 2017. 
I mean, giant institutions, I, I understand that's a lot of responsibility and probably an extremely hard role to get hired for. But 2.5 million as an educator? One thing that's so frustrating to me is I went to a graduation, my wife's graduation, and the speakers, you know, we have to make education more to, more affordable. We have to continue. The college is not um, is not for the everyday person anymore. But then you turn around and that same person speaking has had a 30% raise over the last three years. Like, come on, don't don't feed that garbage if you're not gonna you're not helping the problem. I mean, the salaries are what's driving up a lot of the cost here. And so, anyway, enough ranting for that. I I mean, I I am happy I went to college, but at a certain point, right, we're gonna start to find this balance where the total amount of debt or the total cost is not equaling the outcome or the the salaries that you're making when you graduate. All right, well, that's all we had in today's video. If you enjoyed it, please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. Again, we're trying to make it to a thousand subscribers. So thanks for helping us get there. And remember, finance is fun. See ya.